What's going on, people? Can you hear me out there? All right. Just taking a second just to get myself situated. <laughs> hey, what's up, Daniel? I thought you weren't going to be able to join us. All right. Okay. Just closing out some windows, getting ready to go. Clear my console. Okay, so let's see here. First thing I'm going to do is <clears throat> I need to see if I have a project lying around where I just play an audio file. Hopefully I have something around audio player. This looks good. This is a plug-in. I was hoping that I'd have one that was uh, simple audio player. I was hoping that I'd have one that was just a standalone app. So let's have a look. This is not good. I'm trying to get this. actually work here. So, okay, so I'm just getting myself in the groove here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see, I have this audio player. I forget. I forget how I actually, oh, okay. So let's see here. I think this might actually use the traction engine. This might be a little bit. This might be a little bit interesting. Oh, hopefully it doesn't play too loud. Ooh, that's very loud. Okay. Uh, so let's first go down here. Transport. Transport, get next audio block, buffer to fill. Um, first thing, now I know that I have an audio player plugin somewhere. Sorry, just looking for a different. Looking for a different project. So let's see here. Audio player. Let's try this one. So 
looks to be a plug-in. So, let's see what we have here. Okay, let's just try this, see what happens. Oh, I used with I used this with the host. That's right. Okay, so let me hook up the host. Hopefully I have it. I have it built somewhere. So juice in here just trying to hook this up to the plugin host so we have a place where we can actually build this and test it out build debug audio plugin host so i think that should work let's try that thanks for tuning in how many people do we got watching seven people thank you for tuning in um, so this isn't, this isn't meant to be a very serious thing. I have no idea if I'm going to be able to get this to actually work or not, but, um, hopefully we'll have some fun along the way and, uh, learn a few things. Just thought that it might be fun to, um, just work through this and, uh, and see if we can actually get this thing working or start to get, start to implement it. So the first thing that we're doing here is we're just trying to get the actual uh, plugin working here. So I even forget what the name of this is. Audio player. Might need to rescan this library. Um. So options. So now we're going to do this. It might crash on us. There we go. And uh, so I just need to try to actually import my actual plugin here. Of course, the sound toy stuff doesn't work in the debugger. So we're just trying to get the audio file itself to actually show up. Now, just to be sure, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to just lower the gain on this a little bit so I don't blow my ears out. Can I do this? Oh. So this, what do I have here? Transport get next audio block. So audio format reader source. Just want to adjust these. Uh, so So 
So this is this is different than I remember doing this before. So I'm just having a look, sorry. So, okay. So I'm just, uh, just want to lower the gain on this just a little bit, just so we have, uh, so I don't blow my ears out. Is there a transport? Ah, Daniel always coming through for me. Uh, so there's actually a transport that set gain where you can actually set the gain. Great. Okay. So let's try that. Don't know if that's got to happen before or after the actual. Uh... So where is this actual thing? Um, so it's called audio player. Where is it? Just gonna scan again here. I'm gonna build just for AU. So not quite sure why. I guess I need to do it for all to get it to pop up. All these things that you learn on the fly. So let's so let's try to do this again. Scan all available plugins. So let's do this. Let's just try this again. See if it works. Just trying to figure out why. My audio player hasn't shown up. Okay. Weird. So let me do this. What's this? No, that's not what I'm looking for. It's funny how something you do so many times doesn't seem to work. So. so let's try this again here. Ah, there it is. Audio player. I see it. So just trying to get my audio player to, to actually play. Ah, here we go. Audio player. And let's, let's see here. So that's all I have from my audio player. We might be we might be coding an audio player on the fly here. <laughs> so I'm not sure how I did this if I'm supposed to. What is going on here? This is so crazy. Do I actually even have anything implemented here? So there's an open button. I actually even set it up. Oh 
Oh no, this isn't. I think I need audio player plug-in. Sorry about this. Need to get rid of all these old projects that are just kind of half-baked. Yeah. I know. I didn't... Uh, Joseph had suggested that I just use the Juice audio player. It's, the thing is, it's got so much code in there that it's and it's in such a way that I'd really... I really don't want to use it because it's all in one header file. I'm trying to, I know that if I have this, that it's at least set out in this organized structure that I can actually mess with. Okay, this, this, this looks like it's actually a, uh, this actually works. So let me do this. Okay, now let's do executable and then let's do this let's go back to applications let's go back to so welcome to the world of audio development where nothing works properly the first time around <laughs> surprise surprise okay just gonna try to hack this together and make this work. Hey, what's going on, Martin? Thanks for joining us. So, okay. Now I need, so this is audio player plugin. So once again, I've got to go back and now I've got to rescan this again. So we just need to do the audio unit plugins. So this, so this live stream could actually be about uh, trying to get your plugin to actually show up in the plugin host. That'll be the uh, tutorial. <laughs> How's everybody doing out there, by the way? Everybody doing all right? Um, the nice thing about having a plugin called Audio Player Plugin is that it would hopefully show up at the start of the list. Okay, so let's try this again, continue on. We have Hello, Samp Hello Sampler could possibly work for it. Um, so, all these fun things. My my confession is that I haven't even actually properly looked at the rubber band library yet. So I have no idea how to how to actually link this library to into juice and it's going to be a learning experience for all of us. So uh so yeah, so I hope if I get stuck that somebody, maybe Daniel or somebody else will actually be able to save me, save me from doom. Um Man, this thing. Has it shown up yet? Audio player? No. This is so frustrating. Let's keep doing this. Yeah. Digger says it's all foreign to me anyway. It's actually foreign to me as well. <laughs> I just get I just get online every now and then and just pretend that I actually know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know what it is? Is sometimes it's just the sometimes it's just the actual um, confidence to to actually get in there and try to do something that you're uh, something that you've never done before. And, and I think that that's really the, that's really the purpose of this live stream, just to show you like, well, look, you know, sometimes, sometimes you start these things and, or you have to do something and you have no idea how to do it. And it's just 
picking a point and putting a post in the ground and just saying, you know what, we're just going to start from here and we're going to try to actually move forward. And that's, that's what I'm, uh, that's what I'm looking to emphasize more than anything is that there are so many times in development where I've had a situation and I've needed to do something. And I thought I have no idea how to actually start to do it. And then you just try to pick a spot or you find something that the little tidbit that maybe you found by Googling online. And then that gives you a little clue to start doing it. Or you just have somebody like Daniel hanging around all the time that <laughs> is able to just say, here's how you do it. You got it completely wrong. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So this is, uh, so this is going to be a learning experience. And this is, this is what I want more than anything is to show like, Hey, we could just put the camera on and we can just work together towards actually, uh, making this work together. So, uh, Hey, what's up, Martin? Big shout out to Carlos as well. Thank Thanks for joining in today. And, uh, and I hope that, uh, I hope that we can help each other and that I don't disappoint and I can actually get something actually working or at least linked to get. So my goal for this live stream is actually just to get something to actually link and actually uh, where I actually call the header and I'm actually able to, uh, I'm actually able to create a rubber band object and that it actually knows what I'm talking about. That's, that's the goal for this. But if we can actually get it time stretching, that's really cool as well. So, um, and hopefully it's not written some sort of antiquated version of C++ that has all of this syntax that I don't really understand. Ah, audio player plugin. Uh, hey, what's up, Corey? Thanks for joining us. No, you haven't missed anything. Actually, you're joining right on time. And we are just trying to get this audio player actually working. So this is an audio player that I've created ages ago. And hopefully it's actually, hopefully it actually still works. And that I'm actually able to uh, get some audio actually playing through. So the first, so the first step, so what, what I'm trying to do just to start off is we have this audio player it's just going to open a file, going to play some audio. Then I'm going to uh, clone the rubber band library and actually see if I can actually start linking the library and trying to use it to manipulate the audio itself. So, okay, that's very loud in my headphones, but it works. That's fantastic. That's a great start right there. And hopefully this, all this won't keep showing up. Uh, so I'm just going to save this host. So I'll just call this test. And I know Sound Toys and some other companies don't actually like it when the, it won't actually let you uh, attach a debugger. So that's why you get that. Uh, but we actually have something that actually works. Now, my suspicion is, if I go back to plugin processor, is that in the process block, oh, I thought that I actually set the gain. Where did I set the gain at? Oh, I did that in the other projects. So now the question is, do I just put it below or before the get next audio block transport? I'm going to, I'm going to take a chance here and say that I put it before. So transport source set gain, and we will multiply this by 0 0.5. Ooh. Oh, Hey Sam, how's it going? Great for joining. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I, oh, thanks for the tip, Daniel. So he says it's a setting of source that doesn't actually even need to be in process block, which is, okay, so we'll do this. I guess prepare to play would be 
a good place to actually do this. And yep, thank you very much, Daniel. And uh, Sam, so what I've heard from uh, Zanakios, who's in the Discord, is that real time time stretching is actually quite difficult to do. But we'll we'll give it a try. I mean, I don't know. I'm I'm gonna just try to get it actually working. Okay, so that actually that was a bit softer, but I'm actually going to turn it down even more here and see if we can actually get this to to actually work. So I love that little feeling of success where you actually get something actually working here. Oh, so I'm actually okay. I know that I'm. Uh, oh, I haven't released something properly. So I'm going to actually turn this down even more. Just want to make sure that I'm not blowing everybody's ears out. Is that, is that volume okay for you? I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to blow any eardrums out today. There, that feels, that feels acceptable to me. Okay. So old master source. So let's see here. Hmm. So I just need to get rid of this. Okay. So, okay, cool. So we have some audio and it's actually playing. Okay, so now let's go to, let's go online here and see. So it's rubber band, time stretch. So you get, oh, did I? I hope not. Uh... Oh, that's a great point. Yeah, don't want to modify the juice source code. Thank you, Daniel. You're a lifesaver. Uh, so, so we're just going to actually get this and we're going to clone it so here we go and what i will do is i'm going to cd into the library or into the directory where my actual um, plugin is and then I'm just going to clone it there so we can actually clone the library, or download the library using git clone and then put in the link. And now it's cloned. So that looks good. And now is the next part. So. question is is there a readme okay great so here's readme so let's have a look and see what this actually says um so this license so we have rubber band command line tool using the rubber so we want using the rubber band library has a public API that consists of one C++ class called rubber band stretcher in the rubber, in the rubber band namespace. You should include to use this class. There's extensive documentation in the class header. Well, this sounds as simple as it gets. Now let's see if it actually works. <laughs> this is where the fun begins. So, now this is going to um so i think i need to go back into the juicer now and actually add this to my header search path and where is that in here header search paths all these menus i always 
forget where it's actually at. So header search paths. Okay, so I think that if I just, so let's go back to the readme. So it was called rubber band, rubber band stretcher dot H rubber band. So I think if I just go here, I think if I just take this and drag it like that, then I think if we rebuild, then I think if I paste this back in here. So the first thing, let's see if this actually finds it. Oh, doesn't find it. So one, so one above, Daniel says. Okay, so let's just try that. It's looking good. It's looking very good. So here we go. Daniel's a lifesaver. Yes, build succeeded. Okay, so that's cool. That means that uh, we have indeed found the header, the header file. So the header file is where we actually are able to actually call these functions. So now it's a matter of digging in here and checking out the documentation. So, so we have one header, so processing options for the time stretcher. So we could set options in the constructor or as bitwise or as option flags. The default value is intended to give good results in most situations. Flags, pref flags prefixed determine how the time stretch will be invoked. These options may not be changed after construction. And Okay, um, so there's an offline time stretcher and a real-time time stretcher. Okay, so processing setting will depend on architecture. So we could do offline or real-time. Then we have, can you all see that okay? I just want, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. Just reading through this, processing what's what it's actually saying. Option stretch can pro, control the profile used for variable time stretching. Always adjust stretch profile to minimize stretching of busy broadband. Okay, cool. So, wow. Whoa, whoa. He wasn't lying when he was saying this documentation is... is um, is actually pretty in depth. Oh, thanks. Thanks for your help, Daniel. Okay, great. So, so let's see. Okay. So we got rubber band, rubber band stretcher. We just got to give it a sample rate, some channels. And then an initial time ratio initial pitch scale. So construct it to give to run at a given sample rate. Processing options in the time may be provided pitch and time ratios. Ah, uh, okay. Well, yeah, exactly. So uh, big shout out to Marvotronics. And uh, he was saying that he that he actually creates the instance and prepare to play. Yeah, so that was one of the first things that I was thinking is how can I construct this? Because the the app isn't actually going to know what the sample rate is and the channels are until 
you're in runtime until the app is actually up. So this sounds like this needs to be a unique pointer. So let's just start there and see if we can actually create this. So we got unique pointer and then it is of type. Oh no, I lost it. I should probably put this in a tab where I could keep going back to it. So, so yeah, so what we need to do is we need to put this in a pointer. And the reason for that is because we aren't actually able to give the, <clears throat> we aren't actually able to tell the rubber band stretcher what the actual sample rate is and channels are until the app is actually running. So, so what we need to do is we can now go back to our unique pointer. And this needs to be in the rubber band names, namespace. And I will just call this RB. And then now in prepare to play, what we could say is uh, RB equals stood make unique. So now what we're doing is we're actually allocating memory to actually create this uh, rubber band time stretcher. And then now we just need the actual arguments. So now, and what we can see here is that we have these last two options, which are, we have like these default values. So what this means for people that are just starting out is that I say people just starting out, I'm just starting out as well. So uh, that when you have an equals like that, that's in an argument that's, uh, that's in your declaration, that means that this is uh, these are optional, okay? So these are optional and we can change these if we want to, okay? So I'm just going to paste this here. So sample rate is going to be sample rate. And then for channels, I think it's getting them input channels or total, total num. So get total num output channels. Then we have this options. So let's see what options is like. So we see once again, that this is an optional parameter. So if I command click and we see that there's this options. So let's just have a look through here. I'm just looking for what the actual, oops, so let's, let's click on default options, see what that actually means. So we got these preset options, default options. So let's, let's see what it says about default options. So the default value default options is intended to give good results in most situations. Okay, so that's fine. So going back here. So I think that I can call this because I want to set different time ratios and pitch and pitch scales. So uh, so we can actually hear a difference in the actual uh, time stretching or pitch when we actually put it through it. So I think I could call this rubber band uh, options. So let's see here. So how can I call this? Is it preset option? Oh no, so it's rubber band, rubber band stretcher, preset option, default options. Okay, so once again, for people that are starting out, so think of this as, uh, like, you know, when you have like a, when you're doing an outline, um, 
I, I hope not only Americans know what I mean by an outline. So like, let me just pull something up just to show you what I mean. Just want to help people out that are just starting here. So, you know, when you, uh, you have these things called outlines, right? So you might say title is rubber band, right? And then within that, you might have something like, like you could think of this as like a chapter, right? So you could think of this as like rubber band stretcher. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can actually see what I mean. So this is for people that are just, uh, just starting out. So, so when I, when I'm doing something like this, this just means that I'm actually like going in kind of chapter and then you might, and then you have rubber band stretcher and then you might have preset option. And then in there you have default options. And then you have like this other one, I think it was called like percussive options. Okay. So that's, that's all when, the, when I'm writing that, that's all that means is that I'm just, I'm just kind of going through it. It's almost like XML in a way. Okay. So that's, that's what that uh, means when I use these. Uh, and this is called a scope resolution operator. Okay. And what that means is that rubber band stretchers within rubber band preset options within those. Okay. So I think I've, beating a dead horse on what that is now. So initial time ratio, let's just put it to like 0 0.5. And then initial pitch scale, we'll put this to 0 0.5 as well. Just try that, okay? So now we've allocated some memory on the heap, okay? Once again, just helping people out that are just starting. The reason that we need to do this is because the rubber band stretcher needs to know what the sample rate is and how many output channels we're putting out to. And the only way that it can know this is if the app has already started and that it's already running. So that's why they call it, that's why this is called dynamic memory. Okay. Because we are allocating it during the time that the app is actually running. We're not um, just creating it on what's called the stack. Okay, so these, like if we look at these file and these other things that we're just creating these objects. So they're created on the stack. That means that they're actually just built when the app actually starts, okay? So that's, that's what that means. So if you're ever wondering a use case of why to use a pointer, that's one reason why you might want to use one. Okay. So, uh, okay, great. So now we have the, this, and so now we need to look, and of course we're, we're thinking about how do we actually input audio into this? How do we actually put our buffer into this? But let's just keep, let's just keep working through the, uh, the header file just to see if there are any sort of additional parameters that we need to actually uh, set. So we have this uh, reset the initial stretchers, initial buffers. Okay. Um, and I feel as though I want to call this here. Maybe I'll come back to this later just to clear out any sort of, so I'm not exactly sure how this rubber band stretcher is actually, how the DSP is actually working internally. But one thing that I'm thinking about is in a DSP algorithm, typically, uh, and I say this as a complete DSP novice, okay, so I'm not a DSP person, but typically what you have is when you're doing some sort of DSP algorithm, what it's doing is you have these floating point, you have these floating point values that are in your audio buffer. And what you have to do is you're taking, you're taking each value and then you're doing some sort of calculation on each one of these values. Now these, uh, 
you have these kind of feedback and feed forward type operations that happen sometimes in filters where what happens is that uh, it does a calculation and then what it needs to do is it needs to hold that value in, in a variable temporarily. And each time it does the operation, then it takes uh, that temporary value and it replaces it with whatever the last value is. And then it might take that, that temporary value and feed it back into the algorithm again. Okay. So reset normally, normally in a DSP algorithm, you have some sort of reset uh, command. And what that does is that basically zeros out all of your, uh, all of your previous values, all of your temporary values. So you're basically back. Your equation is kind of clean again. Okay. Because if you imagine that you're playing audio through your plugin and then you stop you stop playing, well, those values are going to still, those previous values and all those values that you need to hold and feed back in or feed forward or whatever, they're going to still be in there. So reset just takes it and zeros it all out and just makes, cleans out the equation again. Okay. Once again, I'm saying this as a person that is not a DSP person, but uh, kind of understands the basics of it. Okay. So that's my interpretation of what's happening with reset there. Okay. Resets the stretcher's internal buffers. Exactly. Okay. So let's continue on now. And uh, so, so now we got set time ratio. Okay. So we can, um, we can, we've already done that. Okay. So we've already, we've already kind of done that in our, when we've actually created it. And we can maybe come back to this to see if we can use some sort of, uh, some sort of um, parameter to actually adjust this. Okay, so um, okay, so so our friend Marvatronics has given us has given some uh, us some advice here. So uh, we have available. Okay, so let's let's follow Marvatronics uh, direction here. So you have this available. And where, where is it? Okay, cool. So, so here we go. Hey, what's going on, Casey? We Kay, Weller. I recognize you, I think, from Instagram. How's it going? Thanks for joining us. So, okay, so uh, if you're just joining us, what we're doing is we've actually set, we've actually successfully linked the library. We've actually created the rubber band, uh, the rubber band stretcher uh, dynamically as a unique pointer. And now we're looking at how to process it. So we have, uh, so we have this available. So this says, ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames of output data are available for reading. So via retrieve. So we have this other function called retrieve. So let's see what retrieve does. Just need to learn how to spell here. So we got retrieve. Okay, so obtain some processed output data from the stretcher up to samples, samples will be stored in the output arrays, one per channel for inter the interleaved audio data. The return value is that the actual number of sample frames retrieved. Note that the number, the value of samples and the return value refer to the number of sample frames, which may be multi-channel, not the number of individual samples. For example, one second of audio sample at 44,100 yields a value of 44,100, not 88,200. Okay, so this applies, so this is samples per, samples per channel, right? So, um, so now, so basically we have this retrieve. So let's let's just try this. And it appears that this needs to be in process block. So going down to our audio process block and 
Mm, forgot what I've actually done here. So just going to clean some of this up here. This annoys me. Okay, cool. So, so let's just try to call this. And we have uh, RB retrieve. And we see that it returns, uh, it'll return how many samples that we can actually use here. So now we have our output. So this takes a float const. So samples, we already know this. This is going to be buffer, get num samples. Okay. And so I believe that we want to get a right pointer here. So or channel equals zero. Oh, you can actually, oh, this is, this is interesting. So, uh, our friend Marv said that we can actually use, we can actually get all of our, uh, all of our right pointers. So we could say buffer, get array of right pointers. So this returns an array of right pointers. So we need to actually, we need to go up here, auto right pointers equals Ooh, I didn't mean to build there. Okay, so now we have right pointers and then we go auto what we call what would we call the samples available? So nothing's yelling at me at the moment, so which is good. And now we need to go to, so let's, so this gets our, this gets our buffer into the, rubber band and now samples samples available from stretcher okay I'm gonna follow this guy clearly knows what he's doing here so I'm gonna do samples available from stretcher and so so this determines how many samples we have available. And then now we have this function available. Ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames are available for reading. Okay, so we have, uh, so int available. So, Yeah. Yeah. So, so this is how many, so let's see. So this is supposed to, so this is supposed to be after the fact, right? So this is where we're actually getting the, it's already been stretched and we want to do something else, right? Is that right? So, okay. So I'm just going to follow this guy's instructions here. The outline of the process is ask, ask stretcher available, if not enough available, process data through the, from the input buffer. Okay. So, Auto. I'm trying to think about what I'm thinking about and trying to think about what he's thinking about at the same time. So, so this is what, uh, so samples. Okay. So 
samples available from stretcher should be this, right? Auto samples available from stretcher equals RB available, right? And then Yeah, so, okay. So, so I don't, one thing that I don't understand is, is it retrieving, so it's obtained some processed output data from the stretcher. So, yeah, so what we're doing is we're putting the right buffers in, the, we're, we're putting the array of right pointers in, and then this is supposed, so isn't retrieve supposed to be really like, rubber band output or something like that. Oops. So, oh, so retrieve is after process. Okay, so retrieve is the last step. Okay, cool. So, so it's, Find out if there's any samples available, if there are samples. So if samples available from stretcher is greater than zero, then would it be like RB process? Is that, you need to write the stretcher processing loop. So, ah, okay, so, or, so what, I'm not sure what you mean by, by inverted. So samples amount required for output. So, ah, uh, okay. So while samples available amount required, amount required for output. So what is how many samples you need to write into the main output buffer. So, but that would be buffer, that would be the number of samples, right? So, so while samples, I'm not quite sure. Let's, let's have a look here. So I've gotten, I've gotten a little bit tangled up here. So ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames are available for reading. Oh, okay. So retrieve is at the end. And then. Okay. So it sounds like. So what's, what's retrieve return? So it sounds to me like RB output needs to be declared as a member. So let's, so let's see. So ask the stretcher how many Audio sample frames of output data are available for reading. This function returns zero if no frames are available. This usually means more input data needs to be provided. If the stre but if the stretcher is running in threaded mode.
Okay, so let's so let's look at this first. Okay, so we have Oh, that's not that's not what I'm looking for. So let's go process. Let's look at let's go let's go with process and then let's try to work our way backwards from process. All right, so process is where it actually happens. Read process. I'm not sure what you mean. So provide a block of samples for processing. Input should point to deinterleaved audio data with one float array per channel. Sample values are eventually expected in the range of minus one to plus one the sample supplies. So we need the read we need to read the input number of samples, right? So this this seems so here I need to go for Less than buffer, getting out channels. Oh, yeah. See, you're doing it a little bit differently than. So, so auto. I've never done it like this before. This is this is really interesting. So we got the read pointers, which is our input, right? get array of read pointers. So here we go, read pointers, buffer, get num samples. Okay, so I think I'm doing that right. Now we just need to, uh, set final to true if this is the last block of data that will be provided to, oh, I'm not looking at the right. Set true to final if this is the last block of input data. Okay, so I think that's true. Sounds true to me. Oh, <laughs> I, just told, I was just told that I was wrong. Okay. So, um, okay, great. So that, so that's right. I know that's right. So now it's just figuring out this last, this last step here. Okay. So this is the part that's confusing me here. So while samples available from stretcher. So let's go back to available. Where's available at? Okay. This is this is the one that this is the part that I really don't get. Ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames are available for reading via retrieve. This function returns zero if no frames are available. This usually means more input data needs to be provided. If the stretcher is running in threaded mode, it may mean not, a da not enough data has been processed. Okay, so stretcher has Zero samples of latency requires a certain amount of input before the output appears. Okay. So. Yeah. So at first you will be filling the stretcher from 
your input buffer. Yeah, which is which is the read which is process, right? So I'm just going to ask our friend Marv So thank you thank you to Marv for actually giving his uh for actually helping out here. What? Then So process is is putting so this doesn't even need to be in this while loop, right? So so we have so we're going through it's reading the audio and then now it needs to determine Yeah. So So get next audio. So this should be RB output. Is that right? Oops, that's not right. <laughs> not quite, not quite there. Um Yes, yes. Um, so, so this is fine, right? And then here I need to have some, I need to have some sort of loop, right? So, it, so this needs to be something like if samples available from stretcher is, or should be something like if blank is less than samples no if 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 this thing is more than samples available from stretcher just just think in here then we retrieve um Uh, is that for use, is that used in a granular synthesizer? I don't know if it's, um, that's a good question, Kayzweller. I, I mean, no, uh, I don't think so. So granular synthesis, from my understanding, is taking a sound, uh, I guess it, <clears throat> I mean, you're talking, you're, you're so granular synthesis, from my understanding, is taking uh, taking a stream of sound and breaking it into little grains, right? So little pieces, and then using that synthetically. So that, I think it might use a similar process to this. I don't know. See, that shows you how, how much, how little I actually know about DSP. Um, so, okay, so what's this blank thing? This is the only this is the only thing that I think that we're I'm, I'm not quite sure on. So what else? So what else do we have here? So what's this study? Provide a block of samples from the stretcher to study and calculate a stretch. No, so this this is not this is not what get samples required 
This looks more like what we need. Ask the stretcher how many audio frames should be provided as input in order to ensure that some more output becomes available. If your application has no particular constraint on processing block size, you're able to provide the block size as input. Uh, yeah. So let's see. So, so my last, so this is the part that I'm not quite sure about. So, so here's, so here's the process, right? So let's just walk through this again. So we have our read pointers, which is kind of our input, right? We have our write pointers, which is our output. Now, what we're doing is we're actually taking the, we're actually taking the audio and we're actually letting rubber band read the buffer, right? And then what it's going to do is that it will actually process it and then it will output this RB output, which we still need to figure out how that actually will get into our, um, into our output. So, so now, so now the only question is, so it sounds like we need to do a check to make sure that we have enough samples that are available to process in the stretcher before we actually go and retrieve it. So the two questions, so, so the two questions are, what is this thing that we need to check? So we've got samples available from stretcher which is available. So this function returns zero if no frames are available. So this is, so the return value returns to the number of audio sample frames, not the number. See, this is the part that kind of throws me off a little bit. So number of audio, so like let's, so let's just go. So what I'm gonna do, this isn't gonna output anything, right? I just wanna see what samples available from Stretcher is. is outputting, right? So let's see. So what we'll do, so you're not supposed to console out in a process block, but I'm going to, I'm going to try to do it here. Samples available from Stretcher. Okay, so what I would expect is that samples available from Stretcher should give us something like 512 or something like that, or 1024. Um, and I think that it's supposed to be something like if buffer get number samples is greater than sam is less than samples available from stretcher then process then then retrieve call available after process oh so this goes after process yeah. Yeah, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just comment, just make a console out here available. And we're just going to see, I just want to get an idea of what ooh, this is, uh -uh, what's happened here. 
what's happened here. Hmm, symbols not found. This is not good. So, okay, so let me, all right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna comment all this out. I'm gonna actually go back to, so it looks like I'm getting some sort of, uh, Uh, so it looks like I'm getting some sort of linker error and linker errors are just the worst. I need to include the source It's not compiling. Yeah. Oh, it's not header only. I thought it said it was. Okay. So let's. Okay. So Okay. So Okay, we've missed something that we need to link. So, oh man. So multiple instances, so you can run. Okay, so where? So where's the source? Uh, so let, let's look here, right? So. Yeah, so we have all of these methods, right? So we need to include the source code. So that's where the headers are. So that's where the main is. So I don't understand uh, where. So where do I need to include that at? I don't. So let's see. So there's something else that I'm missing here. So let's just go back to. Let's go back. Oh, here we go. Oh, I don't know how to do that. Sources in the. Sources in the source folder. Okay, if you prefer, uh, here we go. If you prefer to add the rubber band library files to an existing build project instead of using a makeup file, the files in source in the API header should be all you need. So do I need to include all of that? Ooh. So I need to include every one of these. No way, dude. Oh my God. Or is there just one that includes all of them? Yeah, I don't know how to do that yet, though, using the make file. Um, okay, so sounds like. So, so 
So all of the all of the headers, right? I have to include all of these headers. Okay, might as well get started. So man, there's loads. Holy moly. Is that right? If you prefer to add the rubber, the files is source. It's rubber band stretcher dot rubber band stretcher dot CPP. Yeah, surely there must be one that includes the rest of these. Doesn't look like it though. Um, yeah, I could try that. Okay, so let's just try putting the source file in the header search path of the producer. So where's this? What do I need a semicolon there or a comma? Oh, it'll tell me here. Use semicolons or new lines. Okay. Or just add source as another source folder in the producer and clear compile. Okay, so let's try this. Please work. I don't want to rec I don't want to include all of these. It looks looks like a winner. Thanks thanks for your time, Marv. <clears throat> mm, okay. Ooh, it's compiling. It's linking. Ah, uh, it failed. Okay, so let's look and see what happened. So it looks like it's still failing. Okay. So I tried putting the source. Try putting source in there. What about, so. I included rubber band, but if I include, if I included the whole library, it should. So go to file explorer. Oh, I get what you mean. Okay. So let's drag this in here. Now we should be able to get rid of all this. Okay, so let's try that now. No. Oh, but audio curve, audio curve calculator. So one good thing is that we're getting less errors than we were getting before. So that helps. Okay. DSP audio curve calculator. Source DSP. Okay, so it's there. So do I need to maybe put it in the header search path and so I put it in there. So now do I need to do this as well, which is like this. Okay, so let's try that. No. Okay. Ah, man. Let's 
So, where is, so I've dragged this in source. So let's see here. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try something crazy here. So just remove this. I'm gonna try this very quickly. No, still didn't work. Man. Ah, oh, but I don't need the window stuff. So let's see. Oh man. Kind of lost now. Okay, so that, so that wasn't the answer. Okay. So... Not quite sure what to do here. So we thought that it'd be, so let's go back here. So, so if you prefer to add rubber band library files to an existing build project, instead of using the files in source, except for rubber band stretcher, jni.cpp and, and and the API headers in rubber band should be all you need. Ah, so looks like maybe I need both of these. So looks like I might need this. And I need this. So let's try this now. If this if this doesn't work kind of out of answers oh man still not working okay so why so it's not quite um, not quite right so let's see here Hmm. Target. Okay. Let's let's go back to the beginning. <laughs> Just to make file according to your preference for compiler platform SDK. The default is to use the accelerate pr framework and then run make dash f make file dot osx library in the terminal to build you'll need the xcode command line tools installed okay let's let's just try this okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try this and try a different way here so what i need to do is i need to go to the command line and then we're going to go here. Now we're going to call this. doing something oh no it's not doing what I want it to do actually it's just it's just making a copy of absolutely everything is 
that's not that's not what I wanted to do, is it? Hmm. So what's it just? <sighs> Man. <sighs> so what's it done here? Makefile.osx library in the terminal window to build. Okay. Is anybody actually still watching this? <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Everybody. So I'm actually, I'm actually a little bit lost at the moment. So I hope you don't mind. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dirk. So I'm I'm a little bit um Yeah. I'm a little bit lost at the moment. I've never Oh, build dynamic libraries only. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to I'm just gonna do this for a second. Sorry if you hear my dogs. Okay, so I'm lost, but I'm I'm trying to trying to make it trying to make this work here. So CD. So let's go let's go back here for a second. Let's go back to what we were doing before. So we're gonna clone it again. Right. So now, so now I need to include the source file somehow. That's the question now, is how do I, so we just need to go back to the documentation. So let's go back to the readme again here. So this is, so this is where so my my confession is that I've never actually I've never actually done this part before. So this is a little bit this is the part that okay, build a command line so build dynamic libraries only. So, so run, make, dash F, make, okay. So let's just, let's just have a look together, right? So I don't, I mean, the, the real, the real answer here is I don't know about this part. Okay. So, so essentially the situ, the situation at the moment is that, I've successfully linked the header file, the, the, the header file of rubber band and it sees it. But now what I need to do is it's not finding the other source files. So <clears throat> according to Marv, who left a couple minutes ago, what I either need to do is I need to find a way to include the source files, which I tried to do and that's, and it still didn't quite get me there. Or I need to use the make file to build a dot lib. And so that's what we're going to look at now, right? So I've never done this before. Or I have done it. I, I have actually done it before, but I've forgotten how it actually where it actually puts the uh where it actually puts the dot lib. So so let's see here. So this is this is uh this is real development right here. 
is okay. I don't know how. Don't know how this part works. And I just need to figure out how to actually run this. So the make. Oh, so it actually just installs it. Oh, really? Okay, so let's let's just try that. So and there was a flag there was a flag that we could use as well which was uh where did my where did my actual readme go so so if i just put dynamic does that mean that i just Or is it dash dynamic or dash dash dynamic? Did it do it? No, that's not it. So So I tried dynamic. Well, I did this, I did this before and it worked, right? Which was, which was this command. Where is it? Building on OSX. So, which was this make dash F make file OSX library. And that and that worked. Oh, I need to CD into the right into the right place. Sorry. So that could explain why the dynamic part didn't work. So so now let's go back to this one. And then dash dash dynamic. Ah, oh, it didn't work. Okay, so All right, so let's let's try this again. So it's so I can see that it's making it, right? But once you're once you've done making the library, where do you actually so you so where do you actually link to it? lib so there was so it looks like there's an error lib rubber band dot a lib oh man yeah this is this is the part that I'm not too sure about unfortunately yeah because it's just not finding this why is it so this is in audio curves Spectral difference audio curve dot H. Yeah, but it's there. Why? Don't understand why it's not seeing it. So Okay, so let's go back to, all right, I'm going to try this. Sometimes this works. Ah, uh, still not working. Yeah.
I remember having so many problems with this. Oh, man. Yeah, it's just not finding it. Oh, I don't know. See, I thought... Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Framework search pass. External libraries to link. So this would be looking for like a dot lib. Oh man. Where is it? Header search paths. Yeah. Don't know if that's if that's actually Dang. Ah, oh, I'm a bit lost, man. He is man. If you prefer, so this is what I was trying to do. The files in source in the AP. Okay. All right. I'm gonna, man, I'm going to try this. There should be one. There should be one file, though. So, is it that I need to include every single one of these? Oh, man. It's crazy. Yeah, I tried to I tried to do this, didn't work. Man. Yeah, these are all independent of each other, so they wouldn't. Stretch it, so. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I really don't know. Um. Yeah, man, really sorry about this. I really, I'm really kind of lost here. Really lost on what to do. Thought that. Where is it? Yeah. Got a lib directory. I got a, I actually got an error when it actually happened. It said so make dash f make file dot 
OSX all. SND. Oh, there's there's something I need to install. Uh, where's the README? Where is... So there was something I just saw. The SND library. Uh, so is that on homebrew maybe? So let's try this. SND file. Oh, lib SND file. Ah. I thought it was homebrew install. Oh, it's brew. Isn't it brew install? Aha. Uh -huh. Looks like looks like we got something happening. <clears throat> Something's cooking. Something is cooking. We're doing something. So Homebrew is installing this library that we needed. So just to update people on... Is anybody actually still watching? <laughs> Let's have a look here. So my live stream So what we got? So we got so we actually got Wow. That's pretty cool. So just to update the the people that were uh that are wondering what the hell is happening at the moment. Uh so we see here so it says the default target is to build static and dynamic libraries using the command line tool. The SND library is required for the command line tool. Okay, so what happened was I was trying to build, <clears throat> I was trying to use the make file to build the library, but it was saying that I was missing the SND library. So now let's go back and try to do this again. Okay, 
So vamp vamp SDK. Vamp SDK. Uh so what is that? Vamp SDK homebrew. So here we go. So I have no idea what the hell these things are. So brew install vamp. So brew install. Vamp plugin SDK. Okay, is this actually going to work? Okay, cool. So it's so now let's go back. So so basically, what we're trying to do is um we're trying to get this to to link. Um, okay, but I don't need to, so let me, let me just try to do the dynamic library. Mm. Nothing can be done for dynamic. Okay. Static. Nothing can be done for static. I don't understand here, but it works. It works if I use all. <sighs> Check the live directory. Ah, uh, oh, oh, it's there. Okay, now, okay, we are getting somewhere. Now, we just need to get this. I remember this being a nightmare. Uh, so, there's actually an interesting trick here, which is that when you're trying to link a library, you don't actually add the dialib at the end. So, if I remember that, if I remember that correctly. Fingers crossed this will actually work. No, build failed. Okay. But we are getting... We're getting into the right area. There was something... I remember there being something about this. So let me, let me just... Yeah, I remember there being um, there being a little trick here that was driving me crazy. Yeah, there was like a <sighs> live. Oh, oh, I remember now. You don't put lib at the beginning. So it's either rubber band or it's rubber band dilib. Okay, now let's try rubber band dot dilib. Ah, oh, still not doing it, damn it. What the hell is going on here? Okay. It's, I'm close though. I think maybe I need to put it here. Something like this. So let's try here. What if you write the full path to the library, including the library and extension? 
Yeah. Yeah. So, so if I put, if I put it here in, or do I, uh, I remember there being a trick that I needed to do here. So let's try the static library. I definitely remember that you don't put lib at the beginning of Damn. So, okay. So let's just try, let's just try linking to it in here. So let's see here. So we got, include, So what's happened? Okay, cool. So we know that it's not finding it. Uh, so it's, so it's actually a, so it's actually a linker error that it's not finding the actual library, the actual source files. So, oh, let me try this. So let me try including lib rubber band. Dot. Okay, cool. So it gave me audio auto complete, which is yeah. Okay, so it found it now, but it's still not finding this. It's still not finding this header file. I have no idea what's going on here. So could it be that I have this just need to remove the reference from the references from this so that it's not trying to read from the source files. Okay. Okay, so source file is not so what is it saying? Source file is not valid UTF-8. What does that mean? Invalid name from line marker directive. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> That's exactly what my life looks like. <laughs> yep. Yep. We are close though. Yeah, so this, this isn't working. Now just remove this path and move it to header search path in the juicer file. Yes, okay. Let's try that. <sighs> Get rid of this extra linker flags. This is so confusing. Linking libraries is such a nightmare. Thank you to Maria for helping me out with this. Please link. It looks like it's doing something. <laughs> it succeeded. I can't believe it. It's actually succeeded. Oh, Maria, you're the best. I was so lost. I would have never figured that out. <laughs> Oh my 
my goodness. Oh, man. How did that? Oh, what the world? How would you ever know that? <laughs> How would you ever know that you're supposed to that you're supposed to put that in linker flags and not in extra libraries to link? How? How in the world? <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. It actually works. Okay, now let's go back to what we were originally doing. <laughs> This will be like the ultimate success story. Big up to Maria for helping me out with this. Oh, you saved my life. I was lost for so long. Okay, so now what we're doing is we actually need to figure out how to get this library actually working. Um, so, so basically to bring everybody up to uh, up to speed, oh, I'm just so happy that it actually linked. Thank goodness. I would have been so disappointed if I had to have uh, left this live stream without the library actually successfully linking. So, so now, so uh, our friend Marv <clears throat> from earlier said that what we need to do, we, we have this process uh, method that actually, where we actually input our read pointers. So the read pointers are, are read access only to the audio. Then he said, this is a part that was a little bit hazy that I was actually not quite clear or sure about. We have to make sure that uh, we have enough samples available in order to actually output, um, actually output the, actually do the processing. And if we're actually able to do the processing, then we get, we basically get our output. And then we somehow have to take this output and we have to put it back into our buffer. Uh, so, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work, but the last thing that we left off with was that <clears throat> we weren't sure how this how this samples available from Stretcher actually kind of fit into the bigger picture. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to console this out and see if the number, so my suspicion would be that this would, Sam samples available from Stretcher would give us some sort of, uh, oh, look at this, samples available from Stretcher. So we see that this is actually increasing. Uh, so this is, this is actually doing something very interesting. So we have, so it's just counting, counting up and up and up and up and up. So this is cool in that we see that there's something actually interesting happening here. So my, my suspicion here is that what we need to say is something like if buffer get num samples is less than samples available from stretcher this is just complete this is just complete like intuition here then we get some data from our stretcher and then we try to put it into the actual uh, into our output and then this should be else. And I guess if we do that, then we could just maybe put our regular output out. I don't know. Like maybe, maybe we don't put anything out. Right. Um, so this is the part. So this is the last, I hope this is the last piece of the puzzle, which is, we have this 
RB output. So if we look at the retrieve function, this returns, obtains some processed output data from the stretcher. Of the sample samples will be stored in the output arrays. So output arrays, so this means that this is an array, one per channel for deinterleaved audio data pointed to by output. Okay. So this I don't know. Let's try it. So this so one for each channel. So yeah. So now we just need to somehow restore the arrays. Sample one per channel. So pointed to by output. So So for, I'm going to try this for INTI equals zero, I is less than RB output. I thought it might be RB output dot size. So RB output, so let's have a look at, so <clears throat> RB output is a long, is an unsigned, is an unsigned long. So do I just do this? Uh, see. So this is going to give us our right, this is going to give us our right pointers back. Right pointers. Get array of right pointers. It's going to return a float star star. Now this is, this is what I don't quite understand. Is... How to get this back into the output. Hmm. Let me just open my window. <sighs> so now Now it's this final piece of the puzzle that we need to figure out. Sorry about my dogs, by the way. Um, okay. So process puts the audio in. Then retrieve gets the value back out. See, this is Yeah. So retrieve gets so retrieve gets the result of obtain some processed audio data from the stretcher.
pointed to by output. This is this is the part here that I haven't quite figured out. So, oh, okay, so the return value is the actual number of sample frames retrieved. So we don't actually, we don't actually put that. So this is just telling, so this is just telling us how many samples have been retrieved. Note that the value of samples and the return value refer to the number of audio sample frames, not the number of individual samples. No, so, so, Okay, so let's just let's let's have a look at what retrieve actually consoles out. All right, so let's let's do what we did for So this is wrong. So I thought RB output was an array. So let's do Our good old debug. This is going to be RB out. So I'm going to just want to see what it's actually outputting. So it looks like it's just giving us the number of samples that are actually output. I mean, so it's okay. I'm just going to try, I'm going to just try, try playing it to see if it actually, if it's actually, uh, If, it, if it's actually coming out stretched or not. Hopefully I'm not going to blow any ears out here. So just if you're listening on headphones, just uh, turn them down. Okay, because I never know what these things are going to. Okay, that was interesting. That was interesting. What was it doing there? What's that about? Okay, so let's... So let's go back to prepare to play and see. So that was 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, right? So I'm just going to try to play it at 1, see if it actually... See if it actually plays. Oh, oh, we need to do something else as well. Which is Oh, no, I got rid of I got rid of those. Yeah, just make sure if you're consoling out in your audio block that you actually comment it out or delete it before you actually um play it or else it will you'll get some sort of stuttering. So let's see here. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, so let me... I mean, is it working? Hold on, let's... So now we're going to play it at twice the speed. And let's just... Let's just see if it works. By the way, thank you for... Thank you for sticking around, everybody that's been sticking around. And uh, hopefully this will play twice as fast. It sounds faster than I know you can't I know you can't tell, but I actually made this track. So I. Uh, 
So I, I actually know that that feels like it's going faster than what it normally does. Okay, so let's try it again. I don't know, I'm not telling the difference here. So let's try zero, let's try something just drastic, right? See, see if it does anything. Okay, so so now it's now it's going slower, right? But that's not exactly what was supposed to happen. Oh, sorry. Um, where's the constructor for this? Initial pitch scale. So. set time ratio so it's not so it's doing something but it's not it's not quite doing what i anticipated just going to try it again Okay, so clearly there's some sort of processing something that is not quite right. Okay, so let's go back to 0 0.5. So now, <clears throat> I mean, the, the good news, the good news here is that something is happening, right? Something is happening. Now the question is, what is going wrong here? So, let's see. So we're getting there. We are getting there. Uh, so let's see here. Run the stretcher in offline mode. So option process real time. Run the stretcher. In this mode, only process should be called. So what... So what mode did we actually call here? Pre so so did I call any options? So, oh, so it looks like I need to do something else that I've done. Uh, I haven't done something here. So let's go back here. <sighs> Option process. So let's search for that. Option process. Uh-huh, okay. So, option process real time. Okay, so, where do I actually set that? <laughs> So, 
set pitch scale. So there's there's one enum called option, and then there's one called the options. Okay, now where so where is where do we actually set these? Options, options. Okay. Hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sleeping at the wheel today. This is preset option, not options. So how do I use this? Okay, so now... Let's go back to the constructor. Feel like feel like I'm getting somewhere now. So we got default options. Okay, so default options. <sighs> yeah, you're telling me dusty tracks. Wouldn't it be cool if Traction Engine actually had this sort of documentation? That would be like really cool. So I'm gonna try. Options, option process real time. So I'm going to try this. No idea if this is going to work or not. Okay, so it hasn't really done anything. Just going to try this again. So I put that pretty extreme. Let me just try try this again. Oh. That sounds something like what we're looking for. Okay. I'm just going to try something very quickly here, which is I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and I'm just going to try to straight up process it. See if it actually, see if it actually works. Okay, so, okay, so there's clearly some sort of, there's clearly some sort of, uh, some sort of process, there's some, there's some step that's missing here, which is that I need to make sure that the samples available from Stretcher is, so we need something in here.
So I feel like maybe it should be like this. Okay, not getting anything. Okay. So, ah, uh, I see something. I see something is coming out here. Ring buffer read. 512 requested. Only this many available. Okay. So, we are getting there, though. Okay, so... Let's go, let's go back, right? So I feel like it's getting close. <clears throat> so let's see if it consoles out any sort of other interesting stuff. Do I still have anybody watching? Let's see here. Hey, we still have 15 people watching. Thank you very much. So, so let's try this. Let's go back here. Okay. So there was something there was something that was happening there, right? Samples available from samples available from stretcher. So, this is actually getting output from, that's not what we want, right? I thought it'd be buffer getting them samples. Not quite. So there was something interesting going on there when I had this. It was giving me... So I feel like there's something else, one more step that's missing here. So let's see. Ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames should be provided as input to ensure that some more output becomes available. If your application has no particular constraint on processing block size, you are able to provide any block size as input for each, each cycle. Then you're, you are able to provide any block size as input for each cycle. Then your normal mode of operation would be to, to qu loop querying this function, providing that number of samples to process and reading the output use reading the output using available and retrieve so this feels like it's getting towards what we need <clears throat> normal your normal mode of operation would be to loop Querying this function, 
get samples required. Providing, providing that number of samples to process. Then reading the output using available and retrieve. Okay, so the only thing is that we can't just give it... My understanding is that we can't give it just any size, any block size, is that the sample is that the buffer size is set by so so juice process runs the pl the process block in blocks of samples so we aren't just able to give it just some sort of arbitrary number of samples that we wanted to process that's my understanding so if anybody thinks that I'm wrong about that please please correct me So, but this gives me a clue into what, what needs to happen here. So set, set max process size. Note that this value is only relevant to process, not to study. So what study? Study, where is this? If the stretcher was constructed in offline mode, the time ratio is fixed throughout operation. This function may be called any number of times between construction and the first call to study or process. Okay, so that's set time ratio. If the stretcher was constructed in real-time mode, which is what we've done. The time ratio may be varied during operation. Its function may be called at any time, so as long as it is not called concurrently with process. You should call this function from the same thread as process or provide your own mutex or similar mechanism to ensure set time ratio and process cannot be run at once. Okay. So we're getting, we're getting there. I feel like we're getting there. So where is study? Okay. Where is this actual function? I don't actually even see any function that we can actually call called study. Let me just do this. Go back here and just say RB study. So provide a block of samples for the stretch. So what? So let's see here. I'm gonna turn on my light. Provide a block of samples for the stretcher to calculate a stretch profile from. This is only meaningful in offline mode. Okay, so we don't need this. Okay. Okay, so let's so let's go back here. <laughs> Ask the stretcher how many audio sample frames are available for reading. Via retrieve. Okay. 
This is what I don't quite, I don't quite get what it's saying here. Ask the stretcher how many sample frames of audio of output data. Hey, Marv, what's going on, man? Our savior, Marv, is back. So we've actually gotten the, uh, the library to link, which is great news. And we've actually got output. We're just trying to figure out that last step, which is back in the process block where we are trying to trying to figure out what to do here so we have so we have process which is taking our input and now and now we're just trying to figure out what 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 needs to actually happen here so so getting it out to our buffer is the last step right we know that so I was just trying to figure out, okay, so there needs to be some sort of line of code, which is like, if, so in pseudocode, number of samples available is less than samples available from stretcher. That's what that, that's essentially what that should look like, right? That's what my understanding is. So I thought that that would be if, if buffer get number samples is less than samples available from stretcher. No. Okay. So, <sighs> I did this interesting, I did this interesting thing where if, okay, so if samples, okay, so Marv says, if samples available from stretcher, is more than samples required. So samples required to output would be, so it should be this, right? Less. If samples is less. What? That doesn't, I don't quite understand that. If samples, if the number of samples that are available from the stretcher is less than buffer Okay, don't think about the code I have right now. Think about the flow of data. Okay, so we've got our input coming in. Yeah. Yeah, so we've got, so we're taking the input and we're putting it into the rubber band process. Now what we have to do So Marv asks does the stretch bucket have enough audio to fill the out bucket? So 
So samples. So does the stretch bucket have enough audio to fill the output bucket? No, process more. So process. So process should go. So from what you're saying, process should go after. We're looking at. <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna go back to the documentation here. So is your flow transport source stretch output buffer? No. No, my flow is, well, yeah, yeah, so my flow so my flow is the transport source. Transport source. Then we're looking to see if it's still playing. And then if it's still playing, then we're putting, then we're putting the audio information through the stretcher and then we want it to come back out of the output buffer. So this is, so we want to So this, so from what you're saying, this should maybe be a while loop. So while, so we're figure, so. <laughs> so we want, the samples available from stretcher to go down to zero. We fill up the stretcher, then we retrieve it, then, then we retrieve it out of output. But how So how do we query the number of samples? So, so how do we query the number of samples that have already gone into the stretcher? So what we do is put a separate buffer in front of stretcher.
So what? I need to create another audio buffer. So copy Okay, so sounds like we need another audio buffer. So then... So here I need to do M temp buffer set size. Then get total num output channels samples per block. Is that right? Samples. Okay, so okay. So now what we need to do is we need to copy so what is it? M temp buffer copy from make copy make copy of this looks buffer So this is all you tell the transport source to fill the an audio from transport source putting it in a buffer yeah I'm not even sure where I got this where I actually did that bit of code from so okay so we're so we're making a copy of our buffer And then, so I'm a little bit.
giving it to the stretcher to process. Okay. So, so are you saying to input, input the regular buffer, but output the temporary buffer? Is that what you're saying? Transport stuff. Transport source. I don't, I don't Okay, so yeah, so now that gets the information into the temp buffer. Then we copy, then Just trying to get on a Zoom or Discord call here. Let's do. Where's my man? Um, what's? Sorry, I'm calling in. I'm phoning a friend here. Oh, it's normal. It's normalized. Nor. Oh, where? How do I? I don't see you. Oh, there you are. And message. Ah. Oh, I can't hear you. One second. One second. I gotta. I think I gotta put you. Hello. In. Oh, there you are. Hey. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. What's going on? Uh, 
there's like there's like a lot of delay. All right, I've got to turn the YouTube audio off because it's quite a bit behind, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, but that means I can't see what you do. Oh, is there screen share on Discord? Yeah. <laughs> this is so funny. I don't. Even, I don't even know if anybody else can actually hear. Or you might just be talking to a ghost on YouTube. I know. It doesn't look like I can actually share them. Oh, here we go. Screen two. Here we go. This is so funny. All right. Can you? Ah, oh, video and screen share not supported in this browser. Let me just um. Let me just explain what I was trying to explain. Yeah. So you're not using a live audio input. The audio you want to stretch comes from the transport source, yeah? Yeah. So So the transport source fills this buffer, the temporary buffer, and then you pass this temporary buffer to the stretcher via process. And yeah. so as you do process, you keep asking the stretcher saying, how much is available? And as soon as you've got enough available from the stretcher to fill the output buffer, mm -hmm. you can then use retrieve to pull it. And then you check that you got enough from the retrieve to pass it to the output. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I might need you to repeat that again. So, okay. So I have... So I have the transport source, right? So yeah. So that's just... the source of your audio. That's going to fill this temporary buffer. Yep. So so I call so I call get next audio block first into the temp buffer. Yeah. To fill it. And then does it does that? Let me check the. But it doesn't tell you how much it's going to fill. The get next audio block. So does the audio source channel info allow you to, oh, it, you can say num samples. Yeah. So you can get, so you can find the buffer from, from, uh, so you can get the number of samples from the temp buffer. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be an optimization later that you can add where you'll be able to ask the stretcher, how many samples does it need to produce more output? And then you'll be able to use that as, as your buffer sizes, but let's not confuse things just yet. Okay. So, okay. So I've got transport, get next audio block. It fills. So now this temp buffer yeah. has got some audio in. Now you need to pass this to the stretcher. So you're going to do RB process and then get the read pointers from the temp buffer. Yeah. Okay. So let's do this, comment this. So we got um, temp buffer. Thank you so much for your help with this. I'd be completely ah, no lost. Problem. It, it, took, um, it, it took me quite a long time to, to get hours done. Like the first implementation, you know, was like a day. Yeah. But then I had to spend like a couple of weeks actually making it do what you want it to do. Yeah, and tap buffer, get them samples. Okay, so so then our process, so so that brings it in. Yeah. And then, okay, so this is the part. So I got all that. Now this is the part that I don't quite understand. So we have this, we have this. So now yeah. the stretch buffer's got some stuff in it. Yep. So but we're not the right loops yet, but now just you want to say uh, how much is available from the stretcher. Okay. Yep. We've just given it some stuff once, but we might have to do it again. Yeah. So this is, but we'll put the loop afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Then if there's enough available, you can do this retrieve. So if samples available is less than buffer Get num samples. Oh, okay. I thought that was. I thought that's what I was saying. Uh, M temp M temp buffer get samples. Then we're going to retrieve it from the temp buffer. 
yeah, so where's, do I got right pointers? So one second. So now you want to use the, for the less than, not the temp buffer. You want to check for the output buffer. We've got to make uh, sure we're filling enough of the output buffer. Okay. Cool. So if samples available from stretcher is less than buffer, get num samples because that's the output buffer. Ah, uh, okay. I'm I'm starting to come. I'm starting to come to your way of thinking now. You might even want to rename the argument to the process method as um output buffer, so it's obvious when you read it. Um, yeah. So auto output buffer. Samples equals buffer. Get up samples. Oh. Get um samples. Why is that not working for me? Weird. Um auto auto output buffer samples equals Buffer docket number samples. What am, what is going wrong here? Hmm. What is happening here? I feel like that's er an erroneous error. One of the one of Xcode's. It's because the previous line isn't finished. Oh yeah. There it yeah. Sorry. So uh, so the right pointers. Okay. So then I need m temp buffer get array pointers okay so now we need output buffer samples the right point is, is yeah not the temp buffer remember you're writing to the output buffer yeah yeah you're right, you're right. so you read the read pointers yeah so you hang read. on let me check yeah yeah you're so, right you're writing it to the to you're writing it to the output buffer. Yeah. So you're getting it. Yeah, so you're exactly. Get, so you're getting it from the transport, putting it into the temp That's buffer. It. That's Processing right. it, then outputting it out to the output buffer. Okay. So then that's, that's the flow. Transport source is going into the buffer. Yeah. Then you're processing the buffer. Yeah. Via the stretcher. And the stretcher is going to then write via the retrieve into the output buffer yeah so that that's it that's the flow covered of how the data moves yeah the the, the the bit that's left is the samples available from stretcher yeah. won't be generally won't be enough to create output so yeah. you need a loop yeah until you've got enough available okay so we need to kind of transform the process so you're going to have to sounds like we need a while loop. Yeah. So I do. Yeah. So you want to do while available is less than output buffer. That's right. Yeah. Then you're going to need to do the whole process. The transport source is going to have to pull into the temp thing. The stretch is going to process You got update available. And then after the while loop exits, then you can retrieve. Okay. I would have never figured this out. This must have taken you an eternity to. <laughs> so. It's just. Um, so basically. The thing, it's one of those situations where you've actually just got to walk away from it. Yeah. And just think about it, you know, away from the code, because I think the code makes it more complicated than the concept. Yeah. So, okay. So then this is going to go outside here. And also you've got to do the get next audio block in the loop because you've got to keep pulling uh, yeah, yeah. data from the transport source. Yeah. Until you've got enough. Yeah. So samples available from stretcher needs to go back up here.
then output buffer samples. Mm, okay. So. And then when you, after the process, you probably want to uh, clear the temp buffer as well, because you need to go back to the start and right into the start of yeah, the, yeah. the temp buffer. So um, temp buffer dot clear. Yeah. Does that look right? This is, so now this is the part that I don't, how do we get? You want to clear it in the, you need to clear it in the loop though. So that when it comes back to the top and you're pulling from transport into the buffer, the buffer is clear and the, the read pointers are at the, uh, at the start. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. I get it. There might be a more efficient way of just saying move the read pointers back to the start of the the, the buffer. I don't know about that. Yeah. Um, not not yeah. this way that that we're doing it, but yeah, I get you. Um, so, so I think so there may is, be. A, yeah. Go, go ahead. on. Uh, I was going to say. Okay. So 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 it's filling, filling, filling then it comes out and then you also in the loop you need to update samples available from stretcher so you process check rb available yeah um i don't have an rb or Oh, oh yeah so yeah sorry, what i sorry. would do is just drop the samples available from stretch of variable and just do the rb available call in the, the while condition yeah uh you know yeah. it's it's up to you it's just a matter of taste yeah and then um and then we want to check if so if uh okay so i'm not sure what to do next here so so we have so you don't need that available at the end of the loop yeah 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 okay so that should do the trick i'm tr i'm trying to think there may be a potential for an infinite loop if um, if the stretcher doesn't ever produce enough data to output, yeah. So, so, so let's think I about that. Um, so I think there's a way to check. Oh yeah. So if the transport source runs out, mm -hmm. so if there's nothing else to get from the transport source, or, or do they loop by themselves? Um, does what loop by itself? The transport source. Um, you mean in get next audio block or? Transport oh, source oh, oh, is. Oh, you mean once, once it's finished, you mean? Yeah. Uh, no, I think you could set it to looping, but, um. Oh yeah, it's got an is looping. Yeah. I guess there must be a set for that as well. Yeah. Stop. Set loop. Uh, so it, what what might happen? So in the in the loop, yeah, you want to check if the um, transport source uh, is playing. Yeah. Or has stream finished? There's a there's a method of has stream finished. Okay. So oh. So this is just to to go out, to exit out, right? I don't, I don't, I don't understand what you want to do here. So we're just trying to avoid the potential for an infinite loop. I, I'm not sure where the best place to put this would be, but um, yeah. put it in, 
anywhere at the end for now, I guess. Yeah. At the and then I think, it. you know, it's, it's it, now you've got the flow, then you can start, you know, worrying about where's the best place to uh, check conditions of things. Has finished. Then what is it? It's break, right? Uh, but, yeah. But that, that would only break out of the if loop, though, right? Has stream finished? Yeah. Yeah. Would that break out of the while no, loop? That, that break out of the while, yeah. It will? Okay. I don't think I don't think break applies to ifs. Yeah. Okay. So so this RB output doesn't need to actually do anything then? Uh, so the RB output, uh let me check. So that um check what oh dear. So what what does the doc say? What's that actual? Yeah, obtain some some processed output data from the stretcher. Up to samples, sample samples will be stored in the output arrays. So the return value of retrieve. So I think that just tells you how many how many samples it has retrieved. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah, so so sometimes it might tell you you have like x thousand of samples available uh -huh. but you retrieve some or sometimes you might try and retrieve a certain amount but you don't get as many as you expect okay um but i would worry about that later okay so, so there, there might be certain cases where you're going to have to make sure that you fill bits of a buffer with silence if you didn't get as much output as you're expecting I see. I see. Okay. Shall we just try this and see if it actually does something? <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. So what do I have? So where? Okay. Mm, nothing's happening. Okay. Okay. So nothing's happened. Um, are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm still here. Okay. I don't think I can, I can only hear your mic here. I can't hear. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing's come out unless, unless I'm magically, uh, yeah, so I think the next thing is to check what the the numbers are saying. Does the, does the while loop actually run? Yeah. So let's see here. So DVG. So you can always um single step. Uh huh. The uh, the the while loop the first time around. So let's see here. So it has output. And when you create the temp buffer. What's that? What's, what's the size of the temp buffer? Uh, it is. I create that in. Where is it? Here. So total number of output channels, samples per block. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so let's take a look here. So yeah, it's still, it's there. Uh huh. I'll say it's the same size as that. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I need, I need to know what RB available is though. Right. So auto available samples. 
available, else RB available, samples available. So like, so let's see what that comes up with. Okay, so samples available is zero. Oh, of course it'll be, it'll just be. So let's, so let's see if, uh, Let's just put this in here for now. Samples available. Let's run it again. Man, I think this has been like a three hour live stream. Okay, so let's see. <laughs> okay, samples available is always zero. Hmm. Okay. You didn't hold a sample. Oh yeah, because nothing's going nothing's gone in to nothing's gone into the into the uh into the stretcher at this point, has it? Uh, no, and you never. Um, I mean, it should. Uh, it should. Um, if there's some stuff going into the stretcher, it should update the next time it goes through the buffer. So it yeah. it doesn't have to do it in the loop. Mm. So is there a what's the what does process does process now? It's void. Yeah. See, I thought it would be something like this. Process. Um, see what the temp buffer get num samples is as well. Yeah. So should I keep that in the while loop for now? So yeah. WG. So I think that was five twelve, but let's just have a look. Oh, he said that I didn't load a sample. Oh, I get what. Okay, so. Okay, so that's so that's five twelve. So let's go back. I I think I made a mistake back here where I need to do samples available. Okay. Yeah, I didn't load a sample. Uh okay. But yeah, that's still is still zero. Okay. But we clear the buffer right after we process it. That's the reason why when we go back through samples available, there wouldn't be. Is that right? This is so, so, so the reason so, so we're clearing. Hmm. So we're so we're bringing so we're bringing it in, but we're not Get get rid of the clear. The thing is, even if you pass the stretcher's silence, it should generate output. Hmm. Nothing. Um. We don't, but we aren't actually, so, so we're taking it, we're putting it to, we're putting it to the output buffer, but shouldn't we be putting it, uh, are we actually taking, are we actually taking it and putting it, no, we're writing it to the buffer. Right, so we've taken, we've taken, we put it, we put our temp buffer into the stretcher. Uh, 
But when we hit, when we call retrieve, is that actually? So are we saying that we want to retrieve? There's no step where we're actually taking the temp buffer and copy and copying it over to the copying it over to our regular buffer. Right. No, yeah. Because it goes via the stretcher. So it goes in through process and out through retrieve. I took retrieve from what I'm reading here to. So is it so is it saying that we're trying to put it back through whatever we put here in output? Okay, so there so there must be some step missing here. Okay, so I feel like it's something here. So we got, so we got start. So let's, so let's just, let's just try this, right? So like, let's just make sure that it's actually coming through the actual temp buffer. So this should work. This should just play, right? No, it wouldn't play. It just put it into the. Oh, we could do. We could do. Let me just do this. Uh, buffer copy from. So what I would do. Yeah. As a as a test is yeah do that then do this then step by step see if you can get from transport source to the temp buffer and then the temp temp buffer to output okay we're going from transport to temp to output fine and then final step is transport temp stretcher output. Zero buffer samples. So 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 say this again. So we're trying this, right? Yeah, yeah, like this, yeah. Okay. Okay, so that works. Cool. I'm not, I'm not sure if you can hear that or not. Uh, no, I can't hear it. Yeah. Okay. So, so that worked. <clears throat> okay. So the audio goes through that fine. Yeah. Okay. So we know it's going through. We know that it's going into temp buffer. So the next thing is just keep feeding the stretcher. But don't retrieve anything. And then just check available. Just keep feeding the temp buffer into the stretcher and see if the available goes up. Okay. So what, should I put this outside or should I keep it inside? Yeah, don't, like, don't worry about a loop for now. Just. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, so just get rid of, so just get rid of all this for now. And then just see if you just want to do that thing where you know because we know the temp buffer is okay, so just keep feeding the temp buffer to the stretcher, just process it, and then see if available increases every time it goes through. Yeah, if it's not, then something else is happening. It's weird, okay? Because this is you know, this is almost identical to the code I've got here that works. Uh, okay. okay. 
So then we got. Right. So get the read pointers from the temp buffer. Yeah. Then um, temp buffer, get num samples, and then false. And then we're going to query RB available. Okay. And okay. just, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. it. Yeah. So I bug what's available. Yeah. So that's, if that increases, yep. we're good. Yeah. Yeah. So it is increasing. So, yeah. I, th I, th I was thinking that this trans, that this needs to be outside, but okay. So let's, so, okay. So we're fine so far. So now we introduce the while, the while loop. Right. So while samples available is less. See, I thought it would be more like this. No. So. So we got. No, this needs to go inside, definitely. So I'm just going to get rid of that, get rid of this. So we continue to process. And then just going to DBG samples available. So I'm going to put this outside of this. Okay, here we go. Open. Interesting. Nothing. Okay. That's probably an infinite loop. Yeah. Yeah, so it's just getting locked in here. So you need to update samples available with RB available in the loop. So... Sam uh, what happened there? So samples I hear something. It's it's grainy. Um, okay, let's have a look at what I actually did in the processing here. And get next. It sounds fast. There was, there was audio, yeah. Yeah, there was there was audio. It sounded. It sounded like normal speed, but just kind of grainy um i'm just going to do an extreme an extreme uh version here see what happens okay now it's now it's flanging oh what happened there Are you all right? 
Uh, yeah, I'm just turning the YouTube audio on. Ah. So it was like flanging. It was playing. Yeah. So don't we want this to be if rather than while? Can you hear me, Marv? Um, yeah. You can do that. You don't want to retrieve until you know you can get enough. Let's try it. Yeah. Yeah, you can see down here at the bottom it says 512... Ring buffer warning, read buffer read 512 request requested, only like 200 available. Okay. So output buffer samples is buffer get number of samples. So for now, what you can do if samples available is less than output buffer samples and then put the retrieve in an else because then you know you've got enough. And then we're treating the process call like its own loop. So say this again. I didn't. I didn't quite get what you were saying there. I mean, it should be. It should be in a while yeah. because we need to fill the output buffer. Yeah. Yeah. So we. So we got that. So that should. I don't. I don't. I don't quite get why it isn't working with just the while. Yeah. Oh, because it's you still need to do the get next audio block. So maybe the problem before was clearing the, the temp buffer. Uh -huh. I don't know. Maybe it's something to do with transport source. I, I never use it, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what happens to the, the read pointers. They always point to the start of the buffer. Oh, that worked. That worked just now. You go on YouTube. What's that? <laughs> that just worked. <laughs> it was that we were clearing the buffer and that, so it was a combination of we were clearing the buffer and we were in an infinite loop, not avail not updating samples available. Cool. Ah, oh, fantastic. Oh, wait. So, so, so I did 0 0.3. That's that. Uh, was that supposed to be what? So let me see here. Um, so it was playing twice as fast. It sounded like it was playing like twice as fast. Yeah, so I think the time goes the other way. So 0 0.3 means playing 30% of the time. Yeah, that's what I thought. So let me... Rather than play it... it it's So it's... Yeah. Yeah, so play it in thirty percent of the time, not play at thirty percent speed. That was weird. So let's just If you put three, two or three, it should be slow. So I put two, yeah. So it plays twice as slow. Oh, that was um that was the reverse of the way I thought it was gonna be. Oh, that's so cool. Okay, so now let's now let's try zero point five, right? So let's try this. So now this would pitch it up fifty percent.
So it pitched it down. So it pitched it down. I'm not sure. These number, the way they, they have it set up is, is a little bit reverse of the what. So for the pitch, one Yeah, the parameters the, both go the opposite way. Yeah. So, so for the pitch, going less than one pitches it down, going up, and, and going up further than one pitches it up. But for so this playback rate, yeah. Yeah. So, so for, so for pitch, it goes the way you would think it would go for time stretching. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. So, so two would be, it stretched it out twice as far. So it would take twice. Uh, yeah, long. yeah, yeah. So that so that should. Uh... Wow, this is this is a hell of a live stream right here. Cool. There we go. You good? Are you good? Man. Oh boy, I don't know if I I would have ever figured that out without you. Yeah, help. you'd have got there. Maybe it got there in the end. Maybe. Ah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Thank you so much for your help, man. Oh, my pleasure. I'm glad it works. Yeah. Uh, have fun. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh yeah, and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, I'll speak to you soon, man. Thanks a lot. Take care. All right. Well, there you go. Uh looks like we got it looks like we got it working. Uh I'll do a uh I'll do a more concise tutorial at some point. Uh, is anybody actually still actually watching this? If you are, a big shout out to you. Wow, 16 people still watching. Whoa, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And uh, wow, what a great time. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, maybe I'll put this on GitHub or something so, so you can, um, so people can check it out and, um, uh, and uh, actually implement it into their own code. But holy cow, what a marathon session. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to go grab something to eat now. Uh, thank you very much. And I will see you soon. <laughs>